You are listening to episode 28 of the Psoriasis Geek podcast. Welcome back. If you are a regular listener, you will be aware we've had a break in scheduling. That is because I've been struggling with quite severe pregnancy nausea. So I'm six months pregnant now and I'm looking forward to getting back into things. I've had to dial things back a little bit, so instead of having a full blog post for each episode, um, there will be episode highlights up on the blog. I'm going to learn how to put those highlights up onto the podcast page as well, um, so you can get any links that we talk about, um, but there won't be full, full blog posts um, unless I'm having a particularly healthful week. What I would really, really like if you have the time is if you get something out of the episode that you listen to, if you could share that with me so I can use that in the episode highlights, that would really help me keep on top of things during this um, more challenging time. Uh, you can email your favourite bits to Gemma at the psoriasisgeek.com. Now, today we are talking to Isabel. She has a company called The Wardrobe Edit, and she is a personal stylist. I came across Isabel because her sister has psoriasis, and I really wanted to talk to her because she really focuses on helping women rediscover their personal style, and she's really into um, helping develop personal body confidence. And I think living with psoriasis, that is so, so hard for us to do, and so, so important. Important. And it's so easy, isn't it, for us to lose our way. It might be because our skin suddenly got worse. It might be because our body's changing. Maybe we're putting on weight. Maybe we're losing weight. Maybe we've just had a baby. Um, there are so many things in our life that can kind of shift our confidence. As I get older, I know I started to get a bit paranoid about a short denim mini dress that I have. Like, Am I too old to be wearing mini dresses? There's sort of a shift as our lives change in, in the way that we perceive ourselves. And she really focuses on this area, helping people develop more confidence. So there's loads and loads and loads of tips in today's episode. I hope you get a lot out of it. For the first half, it is very female orientated. I'm pretty sure we talk about boobs at one point. We're talking skirt lengths, fabrics, graphics, accessories. But there is a section for men towards the end. Now, the men who are listening, you can get something out of this because most of the things we're talking about can be adapted for your wardrobes too. Um, but if you would much prefer to skip through that chat, then towards the end sort of half an hour in I think is where you want to fast forward to so without wasting another moment let's get on to our conversation with Isabel welcome to the podcast Isabel thank you thanks for having me so we're talking to you today because you are a stylist and I remember in my mid-20s I was bought a styling session and I didn't really think I needed it. I was kind of rocking the whole leggings thing, thought it was quite trendy, but it actually ended up being, and I feel like this is a bit of an exaggeration when I say life changing, but it <laughs> literally changed my life. And one of the main things for me was having psoriasis, shopping was always a really stressful time for me. And once I'd had the styling session, I could walk into a shop and immediately discount 95% of what was in there. And I yeah. knew what was going to look or had a good chance of looking good before I went into the changing rooms. And that, that took so much stress away from shopping for me. And, and so welcome. So I'm really excited to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I know that we've talked a little bit before the show about some of the challenges we have styling ourselves when we have psoriasis. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest problems is a confidence thing. And yeah. we quite often tend to hide our psoriasis away, um, covering up. And I know for me, growing up, I often felt like I wasn't dressing as myself. I felt like quite often I, I looked like I was dressing like a granny going out with like 
full length skirts and a big cardigan and a hat on, you know, just to cover up my skin. So I thought maybe we could um, talk about how styling can help build your confidence. Absolutely. Well, I thought it was really interesting when you were saying about the personal shopping and kind of walking into a store and previously it just almost would fill you with kind of not panic, but you'd think, you know, oh God, what can I try? What's not going to work? And in truth, I think that most women do tend to feel like that, um, whether you have psoriasis or not. Um, And I think a lot of those issues can be around your own body confidence, um, not knowing kind of what styles suit you anymore or, you know, your body shape has changed. You may have had a baby. You may have kind of got older. You may have hit menopause, whatever it is, those kind of certain stages of life, your body does change. Um, And some women, I think, roll with it. And some women are, you know, really unsure what now works for them. I also think a lot of women question whether or not they hit a certain age and whether or not they feel that they can wear those items anymore. Um, And I'm not a stylist that would say, you know, you get to 70 or 80 or whatever it is and you can't wear that. I fully believe that um, women of kind of all ages, all shapes, all sizes should be able to feel great about themselves. Um, And I think a huge part of that is learning what works for your body. So, you know, whether or not you've got kind of great boobs that you completely love, um, but you hate your legs. Well, there are so many tips and tricks to kind of help you learn to start loving other parts of your body or whether or not it's, you know, you always kind of think, oh, God, you know, my bum, I hate my bum or whatever it is. There are so many tricks that tricks that you can kind of use with with just clothes and it sounds such a really silly little thing to say but actually picking the right neckline picking the right kind of fabric picking you know colors that work beautifully together can make a massive difference to your confidence levels I found that with color um I used to dress in muted colors and I thought that's what suited me and then uh as part of the styling thing I discovered that actually my palette was paint box um so I have yellow base skin and I look really good in like bright blue and bright pink and bright red and bright yellow and they're the colors I've always loved but I was too afraid to wear them and then after that session that's what really helped me feel like I was dressing more like myself because even even if I was wearing a baggy cardigan but it was bright yellow I felt a little bit more vibrant and a little bit like I was dressing as who I am. Yeah exactly and I do think that I think you know color is the uh, a sort of great way to make yourself feel great but actually you don't have to be dressed head to toe in that color it could be that you really love you know bright red um but you're scared of it and I think a really easy way to start introducing those brighter colors to your wardrobe or to think about accessories so a bright red pair of shoes combined mm. with a bright red bag or something like that so you kind of aren't too matchy matchy but you your kind of outfit has a friend I think any bright color that you introduce to a capsule wardrobe always try and pair it with a friend so you've got two items of a similar kind of tonal color and that just instantly pulls the outfit together instantly makes it look more stylish and it's a really good way if you're slightly scared of color to start introducing it to your wardrobe Okay, so people with psoriasis tend to be terrified of the colour black because of the colour of the flakes. Your sister has psoriasis, doesn't she? So you're aware of what this kind of... um, So (laughs) if somebody wanted to wear something that was neutral with a pop of colour, what Mm -hmm. kind of thing would you recommend? So statement jewellery, amazing for that. You could wear huge, you know, huge earrings. If they would be irritating because, you know, if your psoriasis is sort of around your ears, around your kind of neckline or whatever else, think about belt options. So if your waist is okay, as in, you know, your your skin is okay, they're not going to be sensitive, belts are a great option. Alternatively, again, handbag, shoes, think about those as great ways to introduce it. Another great way is to look at things like scarves. Scarves are brilliant. And actually, if you pick fabrics like a silk, 
um, and have a silk scarf. Not only is that fabric then breathable, so you could wear that around your neck. If you get too warm, you can tie that around your handbag. And so that also pulls the outfit together. Um, so anything like that, any kind of beautiful accessories that you can take off, remove, change up an outfit with are perfect. Mm, I love that. I love the thing with the scarf because I've, I've done this a couple of times where I've had a scarf on my handbag and I've gone yeah. to the toilets in a department store and I've seen that the psoriasis around my ears has started flaking and I've taken the scarf off my handbag and I've tied it up over my ears um, as like a headscarf and it just kind of yeah. covered that up and it just helped me feel a little bit more confident. So sometimes it it's having those kind of tools, isn't it? To yeah, absolutely. To your day. Yeah, very much. And I think, you know, I think it's hugely helpful for that. And I think for kind of any woman feeling like you've got, you know, investing in clothes can be an expensive thing. And I think if you find certain styles that suit you, you can have those kind of key pieces in the wardrobe and then you can update and change outfits so easily and for a much more reasonable cost by adding accessories. So using the scarves for tricks belts, like I say, shoes, jewelry, that makes a massive difference to an outfit. You know, ultimately, if you're in, you know, for example, a white linen dress in the summer, you can change up the shoes, you can change up the jewelry, and that instantly changes the look of the outfit. You can put on a pair of trainers and make it a little more casual. So it, it haven't changed the dress. The dress is still the dress. You know it works for you beautifully. It's a great shape for you. You know, the fabric's breathable, so it's perfect for your skin but you can just change those accessories and that makes such a difference. So in terms of specific um, challenges that we have with psoriasis, uh, dressing for the summer is one and you've mentioned linen there and you've talked a little bit about silk. Are these the kind of fabrics that you would recommend? Because like I can't wear wool, for example, it scratches on my scratchy skin and that's just a bit of a nightmare for me. Can you talk about the kind of fabrics we want to be looking at for the summer and maybe some styling strategies we can use so we don't feel like we're walking around in (laughs) hospital scrubs, basically. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Well, yeah, any kind of natural fabric is going to be great. And linens, cottons, silks, even viscose can, can work. Um, I would say always think about starting your outfit from kind of your underwear out. So again, it may be that you might need to just invest in the foundation. So you might need to kind of invest in, you know, a great bra and a great pair of knickers. Um, But if they're silk, they're going to feel great on your skin or cotton again, and just give you that um, those really lovely breathable fabrics. So you're not going to feel too hot in them. And then over that, have a think again about kind of linens and cottons, a really beautiful midi dress that can work. So you might still feel fairly covered. Yeah, okay, there are going to be elements throughout, but you're not going to feel too hot. And actually for me, a midi dress is often great or a maxi dress. Um, And I know a lot of girls who are petite kind of shy away from that, but actually a really great long maxi dress can actually elongate your body. If you get, you know, all in kind of one long color, um, that looks really beautiful as well. Does, if you're wearing something like a maxi dress, does having a pattern on it detract attention from your skin or does it draw attention to your skin? Like what kind of patterns could you use or, you know, I don't know, to detract people from looking at me. You know, if you're wearing a maxi dress, your scabby elbows might still be on show. So like, is there anything you would do to draw attention away from, from elbows? Again, yeah, you could, you could pick a beautiful bright color if you're really confident with color. If you're not confident with color, again, I go back to the accessories. So I would be thinking very much about, you know, a bag that draws the attention to kind of the end of the arm rather than your elbows if you're carrying it. Or again, you know, statement earrings, those sorts of pieces. Um, I love that as an option. If you can wear a belt, you can always add a belt to a maxi dress. And that's a really great way. I would say if you're petite, try and keep it a very slim belt. um, Because what a belt tends to do is cut the body in half. Um, So for a lot of really tall girls, they love that kind of breaking up of the body. Um, 
if you're kind of super, super petite, then really thin belt tends to work really beautifully. And you can keep it tonal, but it just it, it just kind of helps break up that line ever so slightly. Um, my personal opinion is, and I totally understand this, I think it does then boil down to feeling confident in general. I think, you know, knowing, you know, my sister has psoriasis and she she's, has it on her elbows. Um, she's kind of learned to get to the point where she couldn't give a monkey's now. <laughs> and I know that's not easy for everyone to get to that point. Um, but I think that feeling, comp trying to feel confident in yourself, you, you can help yourself in some respects by picking the right dress. So if you feel great in that dress, I don't really think that, you know, anyone's going to be looking at your elbows. If you're feeling amazing in that dress, they're going to be looking at you and your dress. Absolutely. Now you mentioned silks. Can we talk yeah. a little bit about the care of silks? Because, you know, with psoriasis quite often, we might put like emollients on our skin or oils yeah. or various topical treatments. I've always been a little bit afraid of investing in silk because I'm worried I'm going to damage it with the kind of things that I put on my skin. Is that a risk factor? And if it is, what, what can we do about it? There is, I'm not going to lie, but there can be. But again, think about your foundations. So think about your underwear. So if you wanted to wear, for example, a silk dress, maybe look at cotton underwear. So you feel like you can use those kind of emollients, etc., cetera, on the body. And actually your underwear is going to protect. There's going to be a layer of protection there anyway. You know, and so the silk dress will last a lot longer. They are investment pieces. And I completely understand that, that if you're investing in silk, that you need it to kind of wear well. Do follow all the kind of care labels. Um, and I would say that if you are happy to do that, that if you need to go to like a dry cleaners or whatever else, I know that's an investment in itself, getting something at the dry cleaners. I mean, you practically feel like you have to remortgage the house sometimes <laughs> going to somewhere like that. But it's worth it because I think if you find, um, you know, a beautiful piece, it will last. And actually, I know that some of the emollients can be particularly challenging for fabrics, but most things would come out. So I really wouldn't let that deter me. Um, I would, I would, I would definitely kind of consider silk, um, especially if it's going to be for something special. You know, if you're attending a wedding, you know, you know that the fabric's going to be breathable. It's going to look amazing all day long. Um, and hopefully is a dress that you can kind of wear from year to year. And I think this kind of was one of the things I learned from going to see a stylist was the when you're going to invest in an investment piece, it's, it's worth investing in some time with a stylist. So you invest your money in the correct investment pieces because I found when I went to the stylist, about 80% of what was in my wardrobe um, didn't actually suit me or make me feel good. And I'd invested heavily in some like cashmere clothing that just wasn't the right fit at all. And since then, and I think, I think my appointment was about four years ago, I've saved so much money yeah. <laughs> from <laughs> not buying the clothes that I thought I should buy, you know, like the classic yeah. little black dress, you know, that just looked awful on me, but you know, I paid a lot of money for a really good, yeah you know a little yeah. black dress and and that just wasn't the right thing so uh because yeah. it's, it's just... true it's sorry it's um it is true and I you know I've, I've turned up at clients houses and they've said to me oh I haven't spent lots on this I've got a lot of them they've also got their tags on um I don't wear any of them because I don't think they work for me but when we've totted up this this these aren't even investment pieces but that dress was £10, that was 15 that was 20 Honestly, when I've totted up everything that was sat in various clients' wardrobes with tags still on, like you've got £600 worth of clothes sat there <laughs> that you have bought, haven't returned, are still hanging in the wardrobe. You know, don't, and, and they were just doing it because they, they thought, well, I think I need a dress. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that one. Um, but obviously, once you know what works for your shape, that in itself is you know can, can be a bit of a revelation um and you know what necklines work for you you know for some people 
higher necklines can look beautiful for others. They just don't work in any way, shape or form. And it's about enhancing, you know, your best features. You may feel that, oh, I don't really have any great features. I guarantee you do. And I guarantee the starting point with kind of feeling really confident is finding at least one thing about your body that you love. And I kind of don't care what you think that is, whether it's your ears. Great. Let's invest in some earrings so we can really draw attention to them. Or whether it's your neck. Great. Let's invest in a statement necklace so we can draw attention to that. Um, and again, you might have amazing legs. Perfect. So it, it's, it's working with the client and trying to A, build their confidence, but B, show them that a V-neck is perfect for you and this is why. And you kind of talk them through why that really works beautifully. So when they next go in the store and they're shopping and looking around, they're thinking, well, do you know, I know that polo neck is just not going to work for me at all because it's just going to make kind of me look a bit frumpy. Or I know that if that skirt hits me on the knee, it's just not a great length for me and I need it kind of hitting me, you know, below the calf, whatever it is. Um, and it just saves you eventually time and money because you know what works for you. You know what suits you. And, and shopping can then become a pleasure rather than a chore. Absolutely. I love what you're saying about necklines because with my psoriasis, I feel less anxious knowing I've got a full back and um, I tend to get psoriasis on my chest, but on my, like around the breasts, but sometimes yeah. when it's really bad, it'll move up towards my neck. And yeah. because I'm quite busty, I always had like scoop necks, polar necks, I stayed away from them. You know, the rules are you've got big boobs, you do not wear polar necks. That's just a bit of a no-no. <laughs> And when I went for my styling session, the stylist showed me I could wear a polar neck, but not a full polar neck. Like, so then it was halfway up the neck, like, like a short yeah. polar neck. And that was kind of life changing for me because then suddenly <laughs> I had like things I could wear when my psoriasis was bad on my neck and my chest. And I'd never yeah. had anything before. And, and so I found that quite liberating. Yeah, exactly. And again, there are really easy tricks that you can do because if you, you know, you're thinking, oh yeah, I probably shouldn't be wearing high necks because da, 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 da. You know, my, my, I feel like, you know, my boobs are too big. And once I add a higher neck on, I, I feel like I'm kind of all bust and whatever else. It's, you can really easily break up your bust line by just a pendant necklace, one pendant necklace or a scarf. You can, again, really easy, really thin kind of silk scarf breaks up the bust line, anything like that. There are, so there are really easy, you know, tips to kind of do that. And um, it, it makes such a, a great difference, a massive difference when you know what works for you. Okay, I love that. So strategies for covering up, but still kind of breaking up your body. Yeah. Yeah. What about the lower body then? So psoriasis on the knees is really common. Mm -hmm. So what kind of strategies would you have for that? Would you recommend that people wear like, chunky belts if they can get away with it to draw attention away from the knees or funky shoes or would sh you know sticking with three quarter length skirts is an option I, yeah I'm not the biggest fan of skirts that hit the knee anyway and I say that as a woman in her 40s I feel like they kind of age you and um my personal opinion is that I would always go well below the knee anyway. Um, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a pleated A-line skirt. It could be a pencil skirt. It could be really kind of sexy. It doesn't have to mean that you are, you know, wearing something that is not going to work for your shape. It's thinking about those lengths again. So have to think about, you know, make sure it's below the knee, the knees are then well covered, but nobody said it had to not look great or not look sexy or, you know, there are so many options. So what would you do? Because I often feel when I wear long skirts, like I look like Aunt Doris. So what kind of things <laughs> would you do to stop yourself from feeling like you're looking like Aunt Doris when you've got a full length skirt on? So again, think about how kind of wide those skirts are going. Just because it's a longer skirt, it doesn't have to be an a-line shaped skirt um a-line skirts are quite tricky to wear i think for a lot of women and i think again a-line skirts there's a tendency that they can look 
slightly lampshady and slightly old if you're not getting the right style of them. It's about getting the right style that works for your body. Um, they look amazing on some women as well. But if you're going to go sort of slightly longer, think more about a kind of a, a more slimline silhouette. So go long, great. But think about it looking a, a long, a sort of longer, slimmer silhouette. And I think that makes a massive difference. Does it matter what you wear on your feet? Because I often struggle figuring out what to wear. Like there's the long skirt and Birkenstocks and then there's the long skirt and trainers, but sometimes feel a bit scruffy. Like what kind of footwear would you wear with like a long skirt? Well, so there, I, I think there are loads of options. So trainers are great for really casual. I love a kind of really simple kind of um, almost like a ballet pump, but with a point. If you wear something with a point, it elongates your feet and your legs naturally anyway. And if you pick a kind of nude fabric, so you're avoiding black, which is great with the psoriasis. But if you pick a nude kind of skin tone fabric that instantly elongates your ankles and legs anyway. So that gives you extra height and that's a really easy option sandals are always great metallics are beautiful and metallics work with everything so if you had one pair of kind of metallic sandals they would go with everything you own basically so that means you could you could invest if you wanted in a really comfortable beautiful pair but you could wear them with everything mm, that sounds amazing now i love what you've just done for long skirts cardigans okay how do we yeah. like cardigans without looking like I'm okay <laughs> again I personally would always say go long um which some people find controversial I love them over jeans and I love them long and a lot of petite women a lot of tall women would naturally think oh yeah that makes sense a lot of petite women would kind of shy away from that but actually what it does it instantly drags your eye up and down the body. So you're looking from the shoulders the whole way down the length of the cardigan and actually it elongates because there's no break. So you haven't cut the body off with a short cardigan. So, you know, go long. Um, I'm talking even calf length, you know, those sorts of beautiful long cardigans. Not only will they keep you warm, if you, you know, you need, it, certainly in the kind of autumn, etc., and winter, but they just look fabulous and they're also a really easy way if you are trying to put a capsule wardrobe together that you can just chuck on pick a particular style of cardigan or color of cardigan that you know is going to go over so many things it could go over dresses it can go over jeans and kind of t-shirts all those sorts of things um, you can even wear it with like a jumper underneath and an extra cardigan if you needed if you go super long it looks beautiful Hmm. I feel reinvigorated about the concept of cardigans. <laughs> so with the cardigan, are we going buttons or no buttons? Or is this like a body shape thing? A body shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would always have it open. I wouldn't be doing the cardigan up. Um, unless, you know, if you're wearing maybe a pencil skirt, I would still, I still love it with um, kind of a little, you could have like a little camisole on, underneath. So if you were feeling like I might get too hot, but pick a fabric, you know, for your cardigan, try and pick some kind of cotton based if you can and go kind of really long with that. And that would look great. Keep the buttons open, just have it kind of long and fluid. But you've got that lovely central point of your kind of long pencil skirt potentially with your camisole. Looks really sexy. But then you've got this great cardigan over the top. Just it always just looks beautiful, and really classic. OK, while we're talking about that, I really like this because I'm thinking like women working in an office, hot office. Yeah. This sounds perfect. Yeah. So you'd have your camisole tucked into your pencil skirt. Um, yeah. So you don't have the concern about any of the flakes flaking yeah. from your top down the back of your skirt into your office. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've got that like yeah. a sealed vessel unit sorted. Um, and yeah. then so you rec with a cardigan, you'd recommend like a really light cotton because obviously yeah. you might not want to take that off if you've got a camisole oh. and that's quite exposing. So like a yeah, really it's light cotton. Yeah, exactly. So avoid wool. Um, you know, we know it's it's too warm. It's not breathable. It's not going to work for your skin at all. Um, and when I, you know, when we talk about cardigans, people also sort of tend to automatically think about those sort of woolly cardigans. They don't have to be at all. Maybe look at viscose again. Um, anything with a kind of viscose base so that's still a breathable breathable fabric. So that could work really beautifully. Um, and 
I think that would work really well. You can potentially still roll the sleeves up if you need to, but you've got some kind of coverage. It's going to look smart. It's going to look great for work. Um, but your skin is not going to struggle underneath it. Okay, amazing. Now, uh, we've talked a little bit about investment pieces for a wedding. Mm-hmm. So um, like a silk dress sounds amazing. What other kind of dressing options would you suggest for someone going to like a summer wedding? So think again about, you know, wide lid trousers. They always look beautiful. So you could potentially pick a beautiful linen, um, a really lovely sort of wide leg trouser, a pair of amazing heels. And then think about the color combination with the heels. You could pick, again, something kind of silk, some beautiful kind of silk top that you could wear. So that might be your investment piece, but you could wear that silk top then potentially for work with, you know, your pencil skirt your long skirt you could also pair it with jeans for a night out um and then think about the the shoes that you're going to wear from a color option you could have a a kind of color that's matching your bag or your jewelry and that would that would look really beautiful Mm, yeah i love that like long trousers fitted top statement piece of jewelry yeah yeah yeah. looks stunning yeah fabulous now we've talked a lot about women and i know you work with women do you have any recommendations for men? I think what we're talking about in terms of fabric choices is all applies equally to men, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Very much so. Very much so. And I think, you know, going into the summer, that is really tricky. And I think, you know, women have a great option that at least they can wear a dress <laughs> and feel like, you know, the wind can kind of whip around your legs and all those sorts of things. I think for men, definitely think about cotton, cotton shorts, at least if you have to wear trousers, again, try and look at linen and cotton. And at least, you know, you've got breathable, breathable fabrics. Um, If you have to wear socks, I know on Amazon, you can kind of get certain socks that are great for kind of sensitive skin. So it's always worth a look. Um, And there, there are a couple of brands that specialize in like UV, um, protection kind of over pieces as in kind of cover-ups or um, jumpers or kind of little cardi style things or poncho style things there's a brand called Solvari um, that I think they're on a, I think they're an Australian brand but you can get them here in the UK and they have options for people with really sensitive skin eczema psoriasis so that's always worth a look at as well then they they cover I think both men women and also I believe children so that sounds amazing and i will put a link to that into the show notes is are there there any no-nos so can a guy wear linen trousers and a linen shirt you know is that is that okay or there's some specific styling tips that they need to do to get away with that you know like what are the definite (laughs) no's I think that's okay. I'm all for that. I'm not, I'm not the biggest lover of matchy matchy. So I wouldn't be going kind of like, you know, white linen trousers and white linen top. Um, I think that's a bit too kind of almost man from Del Monte. I think, um, you know, think about color choices again and just, just picking the right kind of fabrics and, you know, what you would wear in winter, if you would wear jeans and you would wear, you know, a t-shirt Think about that in the summer as well. Just because it's linen, it doesn't mean it has to be white. Um, there are lots of colorful options. Just before, because it's cotton, again, there are, there are lots of options kind of color-wise and some really great ones, you know, chinos. You could roll them up if you wanted to and wear them with flip-flops, wear them with trainers. So there are plenty of options there. Mm, yeah, I like that. I hadn't really thought about that. You can sort of, if you've got bad psoriasis on your knees, you could get chinos yeah. and roll them up halfway up your calf couldn't you so you've still got that sort of more summery vibe going on yeah would the same thing apply with men's shirts you know if they've got psoriasis on their elbows would a pattern on the shirt detract away from the arms or is it just the same thing to do with if you're feeling confident in what you're wearing then no one's probably going to notice anyway yeah I I feel very much uh, sort of that that would not you know I don't (sighs) It's an easy thing for me to say that, and I totally understand that, but I would not let that deter you. I would, um, you know, really try and feel, and it's an easy, I know, easy thing to say, try and feel confident. Um, And 
don't really worry about that because I think if you're kind of well put together and whatever else, no one's really looking at your elbows. No one's really looking at your arms or your, your ankles. Genuinely, um, I know that everyone is very self-conscious at times, it just in general, um, about various parts of their body, whatever it is and whoever you are. But I think if you just naturally exude a, a kind of real confidence, then nobody's noticing and no one's looking or caring. 100%. So I would say that if you get dressed in your clothes and you don't feel really confident, you should probably invest in going to see a stylist because it really, really can change your entire <laughs> approach to dressing. Now, uh, people are shy away from this because of the cost it's sort of associated yeah. to be one of these things that only wealthy people do. Um, yep. I'm not going to ask you to give your specific prices unless you're happy to do so, but what kind of budget would people need to be thinking about? Because I think it might surprise people how affordable yeah. it is. Yeah, and, it, it, and that's a massive thing, actually. It varies so much um, and varies where you are in the UK. I think the most important thing is to go with a stylist, potentially whose style you kind of slightly admire anyway, but also one that you feel really confident and comfortable talking to. I think that if you, you know, you get on well, then there's an, you have to have that trust. You have to trust that they know what they're talking about. You have to trust that you trust their judgment and what they're suggesting for you. Prices vary massively. Some stylists charge an hourly rate. Some stylists charge very low rates. And some stylists charge package prices. I do package prices. I used to charge hourly rates. And for most of mine, I was doing a lot of work for free. Um, a lot. <laughs> and um, our minds kind of really open people know what they're getting and I think a lot of people prefer that because I am really upfront about this is what you get to start this is what we do on the day and this is what I follow up with and I always follow up for clients I give them bespoke advice specifically around their body shape so if you are for example a pear shape typically I will give you you know advice that is just for you but also around your lifestyle. You know, if you're working in the city, the things I potentially am going to suggest are going to be very different to if you're working, you know, on a farm um, or, you know, you're constantly doing the school run and then you're running off to like, you know, your job. So I, I, I tweak and tailor and, and make sure that the advice that I give is bespoke to you, your lifestyle, your budget, what you need, what you're doing day to day, whether you're active, whether you're, you know, you're not, whatever it is. Um, and I, th I think that's really important that you find a stylist that you have a real rapport with. So what's the best way to find that person? I imagine hashtags on Instagram. I mean, if you're trying to find someone who's got a similar style to you and like shopping for style, it's not most people idea of fun. Like what's the best way to do that efficiently? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for a stylist that has a similar style to you. I would go for a stylist that, uh, that you think, I, I, you know, I love that dress. I love what she's saying. Whatever it is. I think the whole purpose of going with a stylist is to find someone who, you feel like they know what they're talking about. Um, and me personally, try and find someone who's fairly local because then you know that you can go shopping with them if you want to go with them a couple of times. I've got some clients that we go shopping a couple of times a year. One of my clients, she sort of regularly says, you know, her friends say to her, but you know what you're looking for now. But, but she just likes us to go together and we're local to each other. So it makes sense. So I think, first of all, look in your local area do the usual kind of Google stuff and um, see who's local to you and um, just see if they've got, you know, some bits on social media, see what they're saying about their stylings and, and just give them a ring. If you naturally get on with them, that's a, I, for me personally, I think that's a massive, um, a massive part of the job is being able to make people feel comfortable because you're going to be stood in front of me in your underwear ultimately and I think that you need to feel comfortable with me and talking to me and, you know, feeling okay about that. So I think that's, that for me is the most important thing. And so if you're going to call a stylist, which you're recommending, yeah. and I think that's a great idea, 
it's probably a great idea to tell them that you've got psoriasis and gauge the response of the stylist before you go. That'll make you much feel much more comfortable, won't it, about stripping yeah. down to your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think any kind of decent stylist will, you know, either send, because I always send like a, a, a pre-questionnaire anyway. So we've had a conversation. Most clients kind of tell me from from the get-go kind of what their, what their kind of problems are, what their hang-ups are, what they're struggling with. Um, I think any stylist worth their salt would send you then further information and you would have a really detailed conversation before you meet um but yeah do make sure that they're okay and kind of comfortable and feel like they can help you with that that's amazing Isabel thank you very much now if somebody wanted to hear more from you where's the best place they can find you no oh, I'm over at my uh styling business is called the wardrobe edit and I'm over at the wardrobe edit dot uk fab are you on instagram I am. I'm also as the Wardrobe Edit UK. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for coming and talking to us. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me.